Oh, fuck. Welcome, everybody, to Wait For Real bonus segments. This is when we do segments that are either too long or too big or not the same host or anything that are too, not actually like the original show. So it's on this channel. A little more raunchy, maybe not. I don't really know. But today we are talking about a big topic, which is streaming wars. And I find it to be very interesting. And I think people who said, hey, what should I do? What should, what should I buy? And I should DM and wait for real saying, what's the best thing to get? And I so said, I thank those people. And I just want to get to this, the bottom of it because I've had a week with Disney+. Plus. And two weeks with Apple TV, and I've been watching the shows, and I just wanted to get to the point of saying, here's my first and initial impressions, and which one you should get now, and which one you should get later, and which one is actually overall the best, and how they compare to Netflix. So when we get to the bottom of it, uh, I have this interesting allusion to the comparing of what Disney Plus is, and what it's actually turning out to be. And then also just the idea of what Netflix is. And so imagine this for me. Like you don't have to close your eyes. You don't have to do anything. But just imagine the idea of Netflix in the same boat as what Marvel was. Or is still, I guess you could say, what Marvel is. And you had this idea that Netflix is this thing that pushed forward an idea that was so enigmatic that you only could compete with it. And... In the same boat, that's what Marvel is. Look at it. It was a idea of a cinematic universe. Not just their characters, not just anything like that. Anyone can do a franchise building scheme. But it's not about the franchise. It's the idea that they created something that was so massive that you could create a side spinoff and you can guarantee that some fan base would know about it. And it would reach back to the original story. And it was amazing because it was a cinematic universe that you've only seen on paper or in cartoons. Or you only seen it looped up in certain like comics. So I thought it was something that was really amazing. Comparing that to Netflix, they took the cake by making their streaming service so amazing and conglomerate. Because before that, what were you doing? You had shows on DVD, you had reruns on old channels and old networks, and there was just no idea of what entertainment could possibly be. And so when you look at Netflix and you look at Marvel, they are people who pioneered an entertainment industry that only resorted in competition coming up next. Moving forward from that, you have the competition. The competition was DC. DCEU, if you want to call it with their movies and how they just tried so fast to compete with Marvel. And now when we look back on it, because they're reworking their stuff, and you can ask yourself how much of a success was DCEU in the beginning years. When I think about it, uh, I think about they went around it the wrong way. I think they went so fast with Superman and so fast with building a world around it that they didn't know whose world they were building around. There was no idea of who was the headmaster? Like, you knew Iron Man was the leader, even though Captain America is the leader of the Avengers. And he was the head pioneer. And I don't know if that was the decision or what they wanted to do, but you knew that this character alone could carry this entire franchise. And they didn't have that in DC, and that was the scary part. And so they were working so hard to figure out different movies and piling on people and rushing towards this idea that they can make as much money just because of the idea of cinematic universes. And it should have worked. It really should have worked. And I don't know why it didn't work. To a certain extent. Other than the fact that they just rushed too much on their production. And didn't have enough content to back it up. You can't have so much lore in one movie. But only make that movie an hour and like 45 minutes. It doesn't work out that way. Moving on. We have Amazon. I'll, I'll give Amazon as like the competitor to Netflix. I'm not going to really go into that. I'll, only the fact that I'm going to go into that is the reason they're number two is because they don't care. I, I think that's ma the main reason because they are so inclined and it's so in depth with other sides of the industry like just 
grocery shopping anyways netflix isn't doing grocery shopping so amazon is content with just being a content builder so that moves on to the idea of my original question of the comparison of marvel and netflix and what app disney plus and apple tv are trying to do you have netflix who was the starter aka marvel they did this thing that was so amazing that you could only try to compete and then you had disney plus which is the DCEU. And I know you're questioning, saying, how is Disney Plus the DCEU? They have so much content. They even have the Marvel movies. So ignore that comment. But no, let's think about this. Netflix. What was Netflix? Netflix didn't have original content. They didn't have anything. They weren't Netflix original shows. It was just, here are some shows that we are serviced to and have a revenue shared towards, and so let's do something with it. <laughs> then they realized, oh shit, if we keep doing this, we're going to be out of the game. People are going to start getting their rights back, less than that, they can get their shit for cheaper, and then we're screwed. So what did Netflix do? Original content. They had original content, which progress them to the idea that they could actually get rid of all their shows that they have go ahead take them away because you know what we have shows that are equally as good the same or just any fucking content in general and that's something i'm gonna go into later as to a problem with netflix but i'm not gonna get to it right now that's what netflix has that disney doesn't have and you might be saying well disney has 7500 shows episodes and movies and all these things so what are you talking about backload of content i personally feel that backload of content isn't good enough you know those vhs movies that you have that are just dusted over beauty and the beast that are only watched on babysitting hours or toy story that's only watched when you have toddlers over on netflix i think Disney Plus is wavering so hard on their nostalgia factor that they're not realizing how much new content that we want from them. Even the fact of this, the reimagining live action versions of Disney movies is just a sellout to me, I feel like. And so to the point where I didn't even see Lion King, and I know it's probably great, but I didn't see it because I knew for a fact that I've already seen this movie, so what's the point of spending money on it already? And that's the problem that happens with Disney Plus, and that's the problem that happened with DCEU. They gave you the movies of people who've already had like 10 movies put together. They gave you Superman as the first thing, and of course you go with Superman to start your DCEU. But in reality, it's so played out, and you give me an origin story of it. There's four movies already of Superman, and they're all the same, and they'll never be different because it's like trying to make a successful franchise of the Hulk. It's impossible because he's overpowered. From that statement, they move next and say, okay, well, Superman's not that strong and different, so let's add Batman into there. Okay, we put Batman in there. You know how many Batman movies there are? We've seen Batman nipples. Like, what the fuck? There's Batman rubber nipples in movies already. That's how played out Batman has gotten. To the point where we need another reboot coming soon. Which I'm still going to watch. But still. And then they got their holy trinity with Wonder Woman. And guess what? Wonder Woman worked. And you know why Wonder Woman worked? Not just because of the climate and the Me Too that was going on. And the idea that women have powers. Which they do in this fantastic movie. It's the concept that. How many Wonder Woman movies are there? Not that many. And when you don't have that many, you can expand the narrative. And if you do it slowly, you can build a world that people will enjoy and wait for the sequels for. I went to Justice League movie strictly for Wonder Woman and hopefully a good version of Batman. Did we get that? Unfortunately, no. So that's the problem with DCEU. They went with their big characters first, left you with not enough content to follow up on when those big characters are done, and gave you this concept of saying, wait and see, 
but we're gonna rush everything and still make you wait and see. And you're just like, what do you what do you make us wait for if the end result was still terrible? I don't wanna wait and see. And so I'm not gonna say the content of Disney Plus is equally terrible to the DC EU, but there is a problem with their content. And the problem with their content is that high thought. That high thought with your friends when you're smoking weed and someone makes a quote from That's So Raven and everyone laughs so hard and everyone's agreeing that, damn, you know what? We haven't seen That's So Raven in like 14 years. That's some crazy shit. Remember that one episode, blah, blah, blah. But no one is really binge-watching those shows because those Disney shows weren't supposed to stand the test of time. Only a few did. And so it's going to be hard to watch those shows religiously like you do with Netflix and that backdrop of watching things in the background. Because there's a very select few shows that I can actually handle in my background because I don't want them to bother my actual activity. They're background shows. Something like Family Guy, Seinfeld, things of that nature where they kind of just hold the test of time and so you don't get a cringy moment. Only thing that is wrong with those shows is sometimes you watch them too much and you get bored with them. I just think they rushed Disney and gave you not enough time to really process the idea of it but before i get all confused in the loop of dreams of it let's actually break down what they have and like how effective a, a service it really is so we got past the analogy and the idea that netflix is marvel and disney plus is the process of dceu because they're going about it in a slower way and let me break down even more how they're going about it in a slower way. They're starting late, obviously, and they're taking their content back, obviously. But all of Disney Plus content isn't technically on there yet. And the sad thing is that they show you posters of it and they say, oh, guess what? That's coming in two years. And you're like, you motherfucker. Why would you tell me that? That's exactly what the DCEU did. They're saying, guess what? We have all this shit coming out, and we're doing all these things, but it's not coming until 2021. Why the fuck is everything coming out in 2021? That's like that's supposed to be the best year for movies and entertainment. I don't understand it. it. doesn't make sense to me. But to have that little tingle of, oh, we're going to hold you on and have you spend more money just to wait a whole year, I'm not going to do that because your content you have on there now is not worth me waiting a whole year. Disney has some great shows. Boy Meets World. Kim Possible. That's So Raven. A lot. A plethora of great movies. But for some reason, I'm not a binge watcher of movies. Your app is for holidays. Your app is for babysitting. Your app is for staying up to date with movies because you're going to have your continuity be within the app. So fantastic, Marvel. You got a reason for us to buy it. With that being said, I think I like Apple TV more. <laughs> so uh, the horse has kind of been out of the race of me talking about it is Apple TV. Apple TV is doing something interesting, but also it's going to take a long, long time for them to actually get a viewer base. And that thing is only having original content they said to themselves but yeah we can be like disney yeah we can be like netflix yeah we can be like hulu blah blah blah, blah amazon we can be like all these things and have a service and have home of streaming things of shows but then also sneak in our original content just to keep you going you know but they said you know what no we see what they do we see what they do and disney plus it's hard to compete with their content their backload of what they have so they said, instead of doing all of that, 
we're gonna do ours early and we're gonna say only doing our content but do it truly how we want it with the right people i kind of respect that i mean i don't know if every project's gonna be fantastic from the things i've seen such as dickinson uh first man and the morning show they hold up i don't think the whole series and the whole app will hold up based on three shows but when you think about it, so did Netflix, House of Cards, uh, Stranger Things, and then there's a third Netflix show that you could put in there that's your favorite, right? Something that you could put in there, or even beside The Office, right? But not having their own, not having a backload of other content is their problem. But unlike Disney, having a backload of content is their problem so let me see if that made sense when i stated that so i said apple tv having no backload of content is their problem having no backload of content is technically their problem because once you watch their shows they only have six episodes each at the moment what do you do after that you're kind of just done but on the other hand disney plus has a backload of content. But that's their problem because I don't think anyone really wants to delve that deep into it unless it's the right scenario. I've heard from a lot of people saying, yes, Disney Plus is great. It'd be great for that moment when you're kind of just wanting to binge watch a whole marathon of old stuff that you missed. But then after that, it kind of just sits idly by like the DVD discs of Toy Story 2 that you don't watch as often as Toy Story 1. Or maybe vice versa. I don't know which one's your favorite. I don't know. And that's kind of the problem with it. And that's kind of why they're at the level of the DCU app. But only the reason they're better than that app is because their content load has been killing it in the movie industry lately. And when you have like half of the entertainment industry like Star Wars, ESPN, National Geographic, and... I'm missing a whole bunch, but Disney Channel, Disney Movies, and Marvel, and everything like that. Of course, you create your own service because you have half of the entertainment. And if you own it, 66% of Hulu, too. Why wouldn't you do it? And so that's where they're going to win. I know that's kind of like a cheap move to say at the end that, yeah, that's where they're going to win because they have eventually enough to monopolize the entertainment industry that you just had to buy it. But if Apple TV... If people can just stick with it just a little bit, people can just say, hey, I understand what they're trying to do, and their quality stays adjacent to what they're already doing. If you can just wait like six months on that and then buy it, I think you'd be way more pleased than what Disney's trying to hold on to, which is the idea that they're the best. But if you're the best, why would you not just show everything at once? I know you got rights and stuff that you gotta do and gotta own before you can get your things. But I think he kind of jumped the gun, Disney. I think he went a little too early. You went a little too early on this one, and you're pulling DCEU move. Which is not like you, because usually you're the Marvel. But this time you're being a DCEU. No offense to DCEU. <laughs> they made movies. They made millions. I'm not, I didn't make a movie yet, yet so. Uh, I think that's kind of it from that statement. Uh, let's go over a little bit of this, the background of what I just rambled on. Netflix still wins at the moment. They have a backlog and they have original content that is either really good or really meh. And the fact that they just kind of just, oh, that's that's right. That's the last thing I wanted to say. Netflix wins, but like by an asterisk because they have a problem of just green lighting everything. Netflix has this problem of greenlighting everything because they need original content. So anyone who has a show, it feels like they're kind of like, yes, let's do it. And so that, that happens where you're watching a whole bunch of good shows and you think all oh, these are all awesome. And then you feel you read a, a review on one show and you're like, let me check it out. And it's just complete shit. And you're just like, how did this get past any meeting or any greenlighting? Like, how did this get past anything? But that's the problem. You're just competing For content, because content is king, content wins. 
And so they're going to either get to a point where their ratio is three good pieces of content to one bad. Or they get to a point where three good pieces to six bad pieces. And the question is, at that point, shit. What am I watching? You know? So I would keep up with that and really test the waters of all your streaming services, especially with more coming with WB, the Peacock, I don't even know, HBO, Warner Bros. There's so many streaming services, there's so many plans, but no one's bundling together. And the question is, what shows do you like the most? And which platform has the most on it for you? But this is my opinion of Apple TV and Disney+. Plus. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments or just DM me your questions. I would love to do another one of these things where people DM me questions. And I kind of just break down my my thoughts, my opinions on it. We kind of just go over it and we just rant for a little bit. But uh, make sure to follow Wait For Real. That's with two R's and two E's. Make sure to follow Blunts and Blockbusters because we do movie reviews and we do movie videos and we smoke weed and watch movies on Blunts and Blockbusters. You know how we do it there. I'm your host, Marche Bird, a.k.a. Squintin' Tarantino. This has been Wait For Real bonus segments. Please, please like, comment, share. Tell your friends. We love everything our fans do. Thank you so much for the process. Deuces, magooses.